Hi scholars, Mr. Wright here back again with a lesson on prime factors. So we're carrying on our knowledge of finding factors and being able to utilize them. Uh, very similar knowledge check to yesterday. The only new part is in the bottom left-hand box, you can see a question asking how many significant figures are there. So just a reminder, a significant, the first significant figure is the first non-zero digit in the number. And the final significant figure is the last non-zero digit in that number. Anything in between those two digits is significant. Anything outside of those two digits is not significant. So be careful which zeros are significant and which are not. Uh, so again, one minute per section on this. If you're taking longer than a minute, then move on uh, and unpause when you're ready. OK, let's go through some answers then. So the factor pairs, firstly, for 12, we have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. You can see, even though it's quite a small number, 12 has a lot of factors, which makes it nice and uh, useful for us. 21 only has a couple of factor pairs, 1 and 21 and three and seven, and 63 has three factor pairs. So make sure you've ticked and fixed those. Also, if you, you're not already try to get in the habit of writing them in order, like we always do, means that when we loop back round, we know that we've not missed any in between. Uh, lattice multiplication then, we can see uh, they look similar in terms of number. We've switched the two ones columns around so we can see whether that affects things. And you can see actually it affects it by a fair bit. 15 multiplied by 32 is 480. 12 multiplied by 35 is 420. So this is why it's really important when you're given the multiplication and you put it into your own grid uh, that you uh, make sure that the numbers are written completely in order because just one simple swap around like this can affect the answer greatly. How many significant figures are there? Answers going up now. Just going to talk through the last three. So in part, uh, so in C, the zero is before the first significant figure, so it's not significant. In D, the zero is after the last significant figure, so it's not significant. E, it is between the first and last significant figures, therefore it is also significant. Bottom right, are they divisible by nine? Remember the rule, we sum the digits and they have to be a multiple of nine. Answers coming up now. Just be really careful with D and E. If you said yes, it's probably because you were confusing with the multiples of three, uh, but that's only testing for threes, not for nines. These had to make a multiple of nine. Neither of those two did. So the answer was no. At this point, I would just like to uh, remind everyone that we really need to be writing our notes on paper. For these next few lessons, we're going to be doing a lot of drawing that can't really be replicated on a computer. I know uh, most of us have got in the habit of using paper now, but for these next few lessons especially, we really need to make sure that we're using paper. Okay. So we emphasize there from the title, we are focusing on prime factors. So those are factors which are prime numbers. We need to know exactly what a prime number is. We've all come across them before, but I would like you to give your examples here. So I want you to write a definition, spend three or four minutes. And what I'd like you to do, spend at least a minute trying to come up by yourself of a definition for prime, uh, for prime numbers. You may want to use examples as part of your definition. So you might want to say if a number is prime and why, or if it's not prime and why. Um, and then what I'd like you to do is to also have a quick uh, search on the web for a minute or so and see if there's anything you want to add to your definition that you found. OK, so about three, four minutes off you go. OK, so what I'm going to do now is to show you my example definition of a prime number and you can see how yours matches up. You might want to tick and fix, uh, add in any bits that you've missed. So a prime number has exactly two factors, one and itself. If you divide a prime number by any other integer, the result will not be whole. So remember, that's our definition of a factor, is if it can be divided by one integer to get an answer of another integer. I've given uh, some examples here. Five is a prime number, as it can only be divided by one or five to get a whole answer. Anything else comes out as a decimal. I've also given what we call a non-example. Four is not a prime number, as it can also be divided by two 
to get a whole answer. So again, if you want to pause the video and edit your definition to include anything I've brought up, then you may. Equally, if you've got something and you think I've missed out on it, I would really like you to put the comments into the group chat on this uh, particular lesson so that everyone else can see and we can contribute together to come up with an even better definition. You might have thought of something that I've not. Um, what We're just going to read this definition and also point out something that a lot of people get confused by. A prime number has to have exactly two factors. And for that reason, one is not prime. One only has one factor, which is one. It does not have two factors, therefore it doesn't meet the criteria of being prime. Okay, so that's a really important thing here. One is not prime. If you need to write that down, then please do. And I've actually added that now so that you can write it down if you need to as well. Okay, now that we've got out of that out of the way, we know what a prime number is. Now we're going to find some prime numbers. So what I would like you to do is to find and list the prime numbers that are between zero and 20. So we know one's not going to be one of them. We just noted that down. We know how to find prime numbers now. So you're going to use your divisibility tricks from the previous lessons to help you work out which numbers are prime and which are not. OK, a uh, few minutes on this. If after one minute you're completely stuck, you don't know where to get started, then I'll throw a few hints up for you. So pause the video now. OK, if you wanted some hints just to remind yourself of the divisibility tricks because you can't find your notes on it. There you go. These are how we find things that are divisible by each of these numbers. Remember that you've also got to test if things can divide by seven. There's no trick for that. You just need to make sure uh, that sevens are also covered. OK, and hopefully at this point, we've now all had a go at finding all of the prime numbers between zero and 20. So I'm going to put them up now. We've got 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17 and 19. Any other odd numbers that you've accidentally put in there, just be really careful. The others are not prime. They have at least one other factor. And do we notice a particularly interesting one out of this list. Which one doesn't quite fit in with all the others? So you may have said that two looks a bit different, and that is because two is the only even prime number. Now, this makes a lot of sense if we think about it, because any other even number, we know even numbers end in a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight. Well, that's also the test for anything that's divisible by two. So any other even number must have two as a factor. The only time that's not a problem for being prime is two, because two is one of the two factors that it has. So it doesn't make a difference. Whereas if we checked for 12 or 28 or anything like that, we would know they'd have to divide by two. Two does still divide by two, but it still fits the definition of being prime. OK, if you want to make a note of that, then do. Uh, so any other primes we expect to be odd, but not every odd number, as we can see, for example, 9, 15, uh, both uh, have other factors. OK. So hopefully at this point, we're able to spot these prime factors. If you didn't get all of these, please make sure you've got the list now, because we're going to be needing to seek out these prime factors, uh, uh, these prime numbers a fair bit with what we're about to do. And uh, after that, we are going to have a look at how we can find prime factors within a larger number. OK, a couple of example questions here. The first one, and we're being asked to write 30 as a product of its prime factors. So what we're going to need to do is find all of the prime factors and then rewrite 30 uh, as what we call a product. So if you remember what that word product means, it means multiply. So we know at the end we're going to be writing some multiplication. Uh, but first, we need to find out what those prime factors are. And some of you may have come across this before. Some of you may not be familiar with it. So we're going to have a look at it together. So we start with our number 30. That's the number that we're going to break down into our factors. OK, what we're going to do next is to look at all. Uh, we're going to go through and find the 
smallest factor that isn't one that 30 can divide by. The reason we don't include one is that if we think about it, 30 divided by one is then 30. So we're going to keep going in a loop forever and ever. So one doesn't help break it down. So we start by looking at two. Can 30 divide by two? Yes, it can. So we're going to draw what we call a factor tree. I'm going to make sure I'm using my ruler here to strive for five. You ideally will be using a pencil. I'm using a pen so that it can show up on camera. Okay. So we know that if we find a factor pair of 30, we can use two as a factor. Now, if two is one part of the factor pair, we know two multiplies by 15 to make 30. Two multiplied by 15 equals 30. Now, remember what we said though, we're also looking for prime factors. So every time I come across a prime number, I'm going to circle it to show that we found one of the numbers that we need. Two is prime, so I am going to circle it. There we go. 15 is that prime. With, let's have a look and see if we can break it down. Now, does 15 divide by two? No, it doesn't. Does 15 divide by three? Well, one add five is six. Hopefully you know as well that 15's in the three times table, but either way, we know that yes, this can be broken down further. So we're going to draw another branch on our tree. Okay, we'll break this down. So we've said that the smallest factor we can find is three. What does three multiply by to get 15? Three multiplies by five to get 15. Okay, so three multiplied by five equals 15. Now we check which of these are prime. Three is a prime number. We've now got our list to check from. And five, is that in our prime list? Yes, it is. If you have a look, if you're not sure, you'll see five was in the list we just made. So what you'll notice is now every branch has ended with a prime factor, which means we're done. OK, in terms of finding the prime factors, we're done. We don't need to make a longer tree. But look what the full question is asking. We'll remind again, write 30 as a product of its prime factors. We know what the prime factors are. We know what a product means. We're going to multiply them together. So this is how we express as a product of prime factors. We say underneath our, our tree, we're going to say 30 equals. And because we've done this in order, everything's going to show up nice and easily for us. So we can see we've got two multiplied by three multiplied by five. That is the product of the prime factors of 30. So that is how you answer one of these questions. Pause and rewind if you need to repeat any of these steps. If not, what the rest of us are going to do is now have a look at this next example. Just going to move my camera, there we go. Writing 45 as a product of its prime factors. So we start off by writing our total 45 our final uh, amount, we need to break this down into prime factors. So we're going to look at the factors of 45. We're going to start off, remember, we don't use one. We're going to ask, does it divide by two? Well, it ends in a five, so it can't divide by two. So we move on to three. Can 45 divide by three? So we use our divisibility test. Four add five equals nine. 9 does divide by 3, so 45 must be divisible by 3. So we're now going to draw our tree. We know that 3 is on one of the sides, and this is where we need to find some way of dividing 45 by 3. You might want to use your bus stop method at this point. Um, if you're really confused at this point, you may use a calculator, but this is a good chance to practice your bus stop. So I'm going to do that to the side here. 
so we can show it's just workings, not part of our main tree. I'm going to do 45 divided by three. How many threes go into four? The answer is one remainder one. How many threes go into 15? The answer is five. So three multiplied by 15 must equal 45. And you can check that if you wish. Uh, with the 15 times table, also remember you can use your clock so that you know how to do that because a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. Three quarters of an hour is 45 minutes. So there we go. Nice uh, quick trick for the 15 times tables if you need it. So of these two, are either of them prime? Three is prime, so I'm going to circle it. 15 is not prime. In fact, we already know from here what 15 is going to look like. It breaks down into three and five. Sorry, just going to readjust there. There we go. We know that 15 is going to break down into factors of three multiplied by five. Three is prime, five is prime. All of our branches are ending with a prime factor, so we've done our job, okay? So now we've got to express as a product of prime factors. What do you notice is different here? What did we have here that we didn't have at the top? I'm just going to move up like that. So here, each of these prime factors were different numbers. So we just wrote them in a line like this. Here, two of the factors are the same. So how do we deal with that? Well, to start with, if you wish, we can write our usual line. So 45 equals three multiplied by three multiplied by five. Now, some of you may have seen this before. Some of you uh, may not. If I have three multiplied by itself, what else could we call that? We're not going to call it nine because if we call it nine, it's not a prime factor anymore. But if we multiply something by itself, what do we say we're doing with it? Really well done if you said that means we're squaring it. So anything multiplied by itself, we're saying it's squared. So three multiplied by three multiplied by five, we can instead write as three squared multiplied by five. So three multiplied by three is the same as three squared. This is what we call index notation. So you might remember the indices is another fancy word for, uh, well, because we know about the index here with our power. So index notation means writing as a power with an index here. So three to the two multiplied by five, okay? So to recap, to write as a product of the prime factors, we draw our tree, we circle prime factors, we write as a product of prime factors, and if there are any prime factors that are the same, we put them into index form. Okay, so we're going to go back to the PowerPoint then. Pause and rewind again if you need any recap. So now we've got a you do to get some practice in. I've shown you the ones that we've just done, the 30 and 45, so you've got them in front of you as examples. And what I would like you to do now is to write 20, 42, and 24 as products of their prime factors. Give yourself about a minute per question if you need it. Uh, try and be fairly neat with your diagrams so that uh, nothing's too confusing. And remember to circle only the prime factors when you've done it. Okay, pause the video now. And let's go through some answers then. So 20 is a product of its prime factors. We can see breaks down like this. So it's two squared multiplied by five. For B, 42 becomes two multiplied by three multiplied by seven. And 24 is two cubed because there are three twos being multiplied together, two cubed multiplied 
by three. Really well done if you got those correct. If you have any of these with the same numbers in a different order, just try and get into the habit of going through the smallest factors first, because then everything in this diagram, for example, here with 24, everything is exactly in order. So rather than having to count three twos jumbled all over the place with a three in the middle, we can see they're all in order, then we move on to the next one. So it just helps us uh, keep track of everything we've got because some of these trees can get fairly big. Really well done though for giving those a go. So we've got a 10 quick questions coming up. We're going to do some unit conversions uh, specifically from centimetres to millimetres. And we're also going to have a look at some problems involving area and perimeter of squares. OK, so remember which ones you multiply for and which ones you add for. So we're going to get started in three, two, one. Off you go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and switch over. OK, and now we're going to go through the answers then. The conversions should look like this. So we hopefully remembered that there are 10 millimeters in every centimeter. Now these square problems we'll look at one at a time. Square has a side length of eight centimeters, calculate the perimeter. Well, that means we've got four sides to add together or four lots of eight to make 32 centimeters. Square has a side length of eight, calculate the area. This time we're multiplying two dimensions together, eight multiplied by eight to give us 64 square centimeters. If you're missing any of the units, make sure to add them in. If we know the area is 36 centimeters squared, we need to use the square root which is six, that's the length of the base. To calculate the perimeter, well, we know the side length is six centimeters. We need to multiply that by four to get 24 centimeters for that particular square. If a rectangle has a base of six, the height is twice as long as the base. Calculate the area. So the height must be 12, six multiplied by 12 to give us 72 square centimeters. The base of a triangle is six centimeters and the height is half the length. What is the area? So remember with a triangle, we multiply the two dimensions, but then we halve the total. So six multiplied by three gives us 18, but we need to divide that by two to give us nine square centimeters as that particular area. Really well done if you got those right. Really well done if you got the chili. And just going to point out the MCQ password, which is 165. Please do not leave it in the chat. 
even if people are saying they can't find it, you know it's in the video because you've seen it. Please don't ruin it for everyone else by leaving it in the chat. If you've really got an issue with it, then send me a message uh, on the classroom. And all it's going to leave me to do is to leave us with the challenge. I think uh, quite a few of you will be able to give this a go if you have the time. Uh, so pause the video now and I will give you the answer in a minute. OK, let's have a look then. So 144, we can see the tree emerging. And hopefully we got an answer of two to the four multiplied by three to the two. Uh, if you have any questions about that, leave me a private comment. I will happily answer. And again, any of your definitions, if you've got a particularly good one, please feel free to leave it in the group chat. Uh, and uh, make sure to pop into the drop in if you need any assistance at all with this topic. OK, thank you very much. And I will see you next week.